Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that it's been a great day so far. Y'all, let's have some fun crafting. Stay tuned. So I have a really fun, cute, and quick Mother's Day craft to show you guys. And it calling it Mother's Day, but it can be an any day craft. And it's a great way to send something special to someone in your life. Doesn't have to be your mom, even though I'm calling this a Mother's Day gift. I know a lot of us no longer have our moms with us, but this is great for anyone who has that nurturing spirit that you want to recognize and acknowledge. And here it is. It is this awesome little piece of home decor and it measures six inches tall and it's almost 12 inches across. But what it does is it folds and then you can set it out and put pictures and little sayings or journal something, write a note, whatever you want to do with this. And it's made of chipboard and it's a great way of being able to create something that can set out year round um, and be looked at and admired and loved for days and days to come. It's more than just a card. It is a living card that just sits out forever and ever. So guys, we are going to make this. So here is what we're going to need to make this project. We need two pieces of chipboard that measure two and three quarters by six. We need a piece that measures six by six. We need a decorative piece of paper that measures five and three quarters by 11 and three quarters. And then I have two pieces of the same paper that measure eight by eight. So the first thing that I need to do is join my two pieces of eight by eight paper together. And if you don't have chipboard guys, you can certainly double up on your cereal boxes or um, whatever type of board boxes that you might have that you might want to use for this. But if you're using a cereal box, I would certainly double up to get the thickness or close to the thickness of a medium weight chipboard. So then I'm going to take the other piece of eight by eight paper and just overlap it onto this one. And I'm going to flip this over and then I'll use my chipboard pieces. So I'm going to take my six by six piece and it'll be the first one that I lay down and I'm going to place it down so that where I join um, the two pieces together that falls in the center of the back piece. So now when I flip this over, you can see that my seam is on the back side of my larger piece. So now I want to bring in one of my two and three quarters by six inch pieces and this time I'm going to do something a little different from what you guys are normally used to seeing me do. Usually I'll leave about an eighth of an inch in spacing. This time I'm going to do a little bit more than that. So I'm actually doing about three eighths of an inch in spacing. And the reason why I'm doing that is so that when we do fold our book, the tension on the paper is fairly loose so that we don't have our paper cracking. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute. So I'm going to flip this over to the other side and do the same thing. So then once I've got my papers down, I am going to use my stylus just to go ahead and create some scores because it'll be easier for me to fold. And especially where I've got the paper doubled over, if my paper is going to want to crack, it'll do it there. Okay, so now I can take my paper, stand it up, and just fold it over so that I can do my mitering of my corners. So before I actually fold where I have doubled my paper, I am just going to kind of tease my paper to fold over so that I can hopefully lessen the desire for it to crack at the point where I joined the two pieces, which created some thickness in the paper. And you can see right there where I joined the two, 
Luckily, I don't have any cracking. Okay, so now that I've got all of my scores folded, I will simply use my finger blade and create my miter cut on my corners. So now I'll use my glue and just place glue on these pieces on all four sides and I'll get this stuck down. Okay guys, so now that I have my edges folded over, I went ahead and placed tape on the raw edges of the chipboard and now I am going to take my liner piece, which is five and three quarters by 11 and three quarters and just place it down. So I put glue on the edges of my liner and now I'll just get it stuck down and then I'll use my paper towel to get everything nice and stuck. And then let's use our bone folder to make sure we've got that glue worked in. All right, so now that we have our liner down, we're able to fold in these sides and bring them in without having any cracking here because we left such a generous space in between. There is no tugging and pulling and stretching of the paper. So it really will resist the urge to crack and you'll end up with that nice finish. So now I have two mats, one that measures five and a half by five and a half and one that measures five by five. And that's going to make up the focal point of this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is use my tape runner, add tape to the back, and stick this one to this one. And then I add tape to the back of my larger mat. And I'm using a tape runner. You can put this down with tape or glue or even a glue stick. So I'm going to take this and just basically try to center it on my chipboard. And then I have two mats for the side that measure two and a half by five and a half. And I'm just going to add some tape to the back of these. And I will put these here on my side panel. So I'll match up the bottom with the bottom of the green one so that they are as even at the top and bottom as possible. Of course, nothing will be perfect. Then I'll bring the other one in and let's do the same thing with that. Place my tape. And I will try to get these centered here, but even at the bottom. Just like that. So now we have basically a nice little foundation to start building up to create our beautiful, beautiful board. And I did not want mine to close all the way because I like having this particular look where you can actually see the inside. And so the way that I would present this is tie a nice ribbon around it and put it in a beautiful little gift bag and it makes the perfect gift. So let's go ahead and decorate this. All right guys, so now we can decorate this fun little hardbound slash Mother's Day card slash home decor for any reason. Let's go ahead and I am going to bring in my books, my sticker books, and just find some cute things that I like. So I like this sticker here that says family. And I think I'm going to take it and just put it right here at the top. So I have that one there. And then I like this one that says other things may change us, but we begin and end with family. And I am going to take that one and just use it on my larger mat. So I'm going to place it this time right here at the bottom. And then I'll find one to put over here. And then I really like this one and it says, my life, my love, my family, my world. And I am going to take this one, turn this on the side so I can work it like this. And I am going to put this one right here in the center. If I can get it straight. And I think that this is such a fun, simple way 
of giving something meaningful to mom or to a friend, whomever, where they can post a picture, maybe put a little picture here and just set it out because it's so pretty and it, you can put it anywhere. So now I'm going to come to the outside and we're going to do just some very simple decorating to the outside, nothing over the top. We're going to keep this very simple. And for those of you who are interested, I use two sticker books that I got from Hobby Lobby um, a while back. One is Family is Forever and the other is Family. And I bought these when they were 50% off of the Paper Studio. So I am just going to use some very, very simple stickers on this. And I think I want to go with this one because I absolutely love the vibrancy of the color in it. We don't have to do a whole lot, guys. We can keep it very simple and still convey a very classy message. So now I'm going to flip this over. And I like the one that says, days like this make life sweet. So I am going to take this and just put that on this side. But this time, because we are saying it's sweet, there's nothing sweeter than honey. I'm gonna take a couple of these little bees and just pop those bees on there. Now, if you want to hold your flaps down with magnets, you can certainly do that. I don't see where it's needed because I like the idea of pulling it out of the bag, untying it, and then having it just spring open like that. And now you can see that we've got this fun and cute little piece of desktop, tabletop, um, mantle top, home decor. And you know what guys, it doesn't take a whole lot for us to create something simple and meaningful. How many times have you received a gift and the gift that you love the most out of all the gifts that you received was the one that someone took the time to actually make for you? That's how a lot of people feel about handcrafted, handmade items. You took the time to sit down, put this together to give to them. And people are very appreciative for gestures like that, especially when it is something truly heartfelt. That we, we all love to get things that help us to remember certain moments in life or to commemorate events that have taken place or maybe even commemorate um, those loved ones who have passed. So it's things like this that really do take on special meaning, especially now. So I hope that you have liked this fun and simple crafting idea. And if you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join my online crafting family. You guys stay safe, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.